So, I was going to make this a little more formal, but I think I'm just going to run through it real quick. What you're looking at is my retro gaming setup as of about two, maybe three months of working on it. So I'll start with the consoles. I picked up the N64 for 19 bucks off of eBay. Had to find all the uh, cables and controllers and whatnot on my own. Unfortunately, it met with a shipping accident, which I'm hiding with electrical tape. If it really bothers me, the consoles alone run about 20 bucks. Below that is my controller drawer. And what I wanted to show you was the N64 controller, also bought off of eBay. Of course, it said the control stick works like it's brand new, which was bull. So, for 10 bucks, I bought a replacement joystick. Feels just like the GameCube joystick, works great. Some people complain about issues with Super Smash Bros. or the Spin Attack in Legend of Zelda. Not a problem for me. GameCube we found in a box under our bed. Um, it's my wife's. Uh, Wavebird adapter. Bought that several years ago. I need to buy three more now. The NES. This is the second NES that I had to buy. Originally I had thought about getting a Famiclone but compatibility issues with Castlevania 3 and Paperboy and other games I wanted to play, Battletoads. Finally broke down and bought one. The first one I got looked a lot worse than this one. Wouldn't play anything I put in it. Green screen, no good. It said that it had just had the 72 pin adapter replaced, so that's what made me buy it. This one, I returned the first one. This one was found in a closet somewhere. Um, as is condition. I bought it and I had the foresight to also buy a replacement 72 pin adapter which you obviously can't tell but it's in there. When I first got it and plugged it in I got the flashing power light, the flashing blue screen. Nothing worked. Tore it apart, replaced the 72 pin connector and every game I put in it fires up perfectly. It's still a little dirty but it works. This is my SNES Junior that I found in a cabinet downstairs, also missing all the cables. Um, it's going to have to be replaced at some point simply for the fact that it doesn't support S-Video, which is going to matter as soon as I replace my TV. In the meantime, it works great, and I have performed the modification on the system to allow it to play Super Famicom games, which I'll show you in a minute. Took all of five, ten minutes, and it still works great. The original Xbox, I was doing some internet surfing, realized the console actually had some really decent games on it. Jade Empire, oh, Knights of the Old Republic, Halo 1 and 2, um, Conquer, Panzer Dragoon. So I was talking to a co-worker about it, said I think I'm going to start collecting for it. He said, oh, I just happen to have one in storage, I'll give it to you. And he did. There it is. Works. Sega Genesis 2. I have a Sega Genesis 1 downstairs, but it doesn't support proper composite video, um, or S-video for that matter. Uh, so... I had to get a Genesis 2, story of everything working right, I bought it off of eBay, plugged it in, it turned on. My dream guest. Yes, burn CDs, made sure when I got it, it is a Model 1, Model 0's and 1's will play burn backups. Model 2's will not. UMD for it. Super Slim PS2. I actually don't remember them looking this way. I thought the Slims were just a little bit thicker, but there it is. TV side of things. I picked up this giant CTR from a thrift store down the street. Uh, Philips, it's pretty decent. It has a few image 
uh, leveling issues, it starts to slope off halfway through. I'm in the works of replacing it with a Sony Trinitron um, 4.3 aspect ratio, 30 inch. Um, this TV actually only gets 27 inches when you're playing a game in 4x3 ratio, which is the only way to play it. So I won't actually be losing any space by moving to a smaller TV. In the meantime, it works great. Up here is a switch box for all eight consoles. Just regular component on the back, or composite rather. No S video here. I picked this up for two bucks, so no real complaints except that it's 300 pounds. Playing anything on that just does not work. Um, at least anything 240p and prior. I could hook up the PS2, Xbox, GameCube, and Dreamcast to it pretty easily, but not gonna happen. I want to go back to the controller drawer real quick. Classic NES controllers, a Super Famicom controller, which I thought would be really cool to have until I realized the cable on this thing was all of about four feet long so it's neat but not very practical I'll either get an extension or replace it Xbox controller, two Genesis controllers, PS2, two Dreamcast, memory card, a bunch of GameCube controllers, and the N64 NES, a Wiimote, I'll talk about that later, and a 360 because reasons. Over here, I have my SNES mouse for Mario Paint, a couple of labels without a home, several cartridge pieces, ah, the old joystick or the original joystick that came with the N64. You can see it kind of wiggle a bit. You can hear it grind. It's no good. Let's talk about the games for a minute. This is my original... Let's see if I can focus. Chrono Trigger case. Or game, rather. Pretty poor state. Uh, if you can see it from where I'm seeing it. Just old. Kind of dirty. That's nothing compared to this. Poor, poor Donkey Kong. Speaking of Donkey Kong, we don't have it on a shelf yet. But here's the complete trilogy for Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3 for the Super Famicom. Here is Mega Man X, which has nothing in it. I'll show you why in a moment. And finally, various casing components. Uh, I had some Universal game cases in here. I don't know. This Genesis case looks retail. It is, in fact, not. Nor is this one, nor is that one, nor that one. And Ghouls and Ghosts is in here somewhere. I actually had to remake, well, didn't have to, but wanted to remake all my Genesis cases because there's no real rhyme or reason to the, the spine designs. Which, again, I'll show you in just a moment. So here, finally, we have the games. These are my Super Nintendo games with the vertical spines. These are all custom cases. Not custom case designs anyway. The majority of these were made by Wiggy from the cover project. I take credit for a few of them and then a few from other random members. Let's go down the list real quick. Well, actually, both of these games. 
Breath of Fire 2. I'm still debating as to whether or not I need Breath of Fire 1. Breath of Fire 2 and Chrono Trigger were both purchased from Sunset Video in Fernley, Nevada. Liquidation sale where I bought each of them Come on, you can do it. Oh, I guess the price isn't on there. Well, I bought each of them for ten dollars. Breath of Fire 2, I popped in the other day and realized that the translation, translation makes it nearly unplayable. I'm contemplating getting a reproduction that had the game retranslated, but $50 for a game I already have is kind of pushing it, but it just might have to happen. This is my repurposed copy of Chrono Trigger. Has the original PCB in it, cleaned with Brasso and rubbing alcohol, uh, but it has a brand new label and a basically brand new shell. Used a sports game, which obviously never got played, so it looks brand new. You probably won't be able to see it here, but in very tiny writing it says reproduction label, which is the only thing that sets it apart from an actual copy of Chrono Trigger, but it is an actual copy of Chrono Trigger. Um, I have the original shell in that drawer there. It just looks a lot cleaner now. And if I hadn't told you and you picked it up, you never would have known. Here's Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3. They have that neat little ongoing pattern with them. Each of them shares the same style. Remember that copy of Donkey Kong Country I had shown you earlier? Well, I did the same thing with that that I did with Chrono Trigger. Here's the result. Brand new, indistinguishable, minus that reproduction label, but again, the same, the original PCB. Uh, this wouldn't work for anything when we first pulled it out of storage. Um, several of these SNES games were kept in a box, in a shed, and apparently dragged through dirt for about eight years. And none of them would work. Brasso is like a goddamn wizard in a bottle. It just melts everything off of these circuit board connectors. And I get to play my games again. I'm not going to be taking each of these out of the box. Here's Donkey Kong Country 2. I will take this one out of the box. Only because this one has an actual custom label, which I kind of mucked up on. But looks good enough when you look at it head on. There's Diddy and Dixie being cute monkeys. Also has a new cart shell. Um, this cart shell is actually special. Uh, it is brand new, like off the press, brand new. You can tell by the plastic screws here. Um, it actually just pulls apart. Yeah, you need two hands to do it, but take my word for it. You can just pry this open. You don't need a, a tool or anything. one-handed case operation. Donkey Kong Country 3 is still in the original cart. Uh, it's pretty dirty, but it wasn't nearly as bad as the first two. Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. I'll be honest, I still haven't convinced myself to sit down and beat this game. I started on Ocarina of Time, so it's hard for me to get into it for some reason. Good old Mario Paint. You saw the mouse. 
Mega Man X is in a special box because it's a Famicom game. Well, sort of. Here's a custom cover. And I will open this one up because the original PCB it is in a brand new shell with a brand new custom Mega Man X label. Probably my favorite game in the collection just to sit down and play. Because Mega Man. Now I'll show you these boxes real quick. These are universal game cases. The same case can be used to hold N64, SNES, Sega Genesis, 32X, uh, just about anything except SNES games, which I'll get to in a second. Mortal Kombat 2. A lot of people call it their favorite Mortal Kombat. I'm going to be honest, <laughs> it was mine for the longest time, but compared to more technical fighters, I I don't enjoy it as much as I do Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat 9. Power Rangers the movie. Excellent beat em up. Sim City. Here is Street Fighter 2. It has a custom label waiting for it because this one is ripped to hell. Super Mario All Stars. Super Mario World, and another f Super Famicom game, Super Metroid in its original Super Famicom case. Genesis games, I told you I remade the cases for these, uh, this nice Sega blue, so they all match. Now all these cases were printed on 50 pound double sided matte paper. So the blacks are black and the reds are sharp and everything's great. I printed these on copy paper deliberately uh, to give it kind of that faded blue look. And I like the way it came out. Columns are from Gem 1 and 2. Every box follows the same pattern with the Sega template. It looks really great. It means I have the added hassle of having to make these every time I get a Sega game, but it's worth it. Uh, flashback Ghouls of Ghosts. One of many games on the shelf that has made me throw my controller. Might and Magic Gates to Another World. The original Mortal Kombat. Nice Sub Zero Scorpion Showdown single image. PGA Tour. Back when sports games were fun. Philios. Amazing top down vertical shmup. For the Genesis, I'd love, love to get some more shoot em ups, but tend to be pretty pricey on this console. Sonic 1. Sonic 2. Sonic. Three and of course Sonic and Knuckles. The cartridge fits in the case just fine. Kind of puffs it up a little bit, but not enough that it actually matters. World of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. Sequel to Castle of Illusion, both great games. And Spider-Man, X-Men, Revenge of Arcade, Arcade's Revenge. It's a garbage game when I was a kid, and I still think it's a garbage game. But I have it, and I can't bear the thought to throw away a cartridge, so there it is. The Dreamcast games, all using custom DVD cases. These were also printed on copy paper, as they're predominantly white, and the gloss cover does a good job. I'll go over these real quick. Uh, Bangayo, multi-directional shmup. Crazy Taxi, the arcade game. Giga Wing, another shmup. Gunbird, another shmup. Uh, I love my shoot-em-ups. Marvelous Capcom 2, the reason I got the console. 
Namco Museum, Power Stone, Good Fighter, Smash Bros, before Smash Bros, well after Smash Bros. Ready to Rumble, Fun Arcade Boxing Fighter, Sonic Adventure, back when Sonic could do 3D. Uh, Street Fighter 3, The Third Strike, Great Game, and Super Puzzle Fighter 2X in English. PlayStation games. Chrono Cross. PS1 games have their own special DVD cases. And Rhapsody, a musical adventure. PS2. I'm still working on the PS1 collection. I'm talking fast now because my phone's about to fill up on space. Burnout 3, best racer ever made. Dynasty Warriors 2, because my wife. Final Fantasy 12, underrated and awesome. Grand Theft Auto, Liberty City Stories, because I got it for free. Lapis Seal Tactics, another good Disgaea-flavored Atlas strategy RPG. Mark of Kree, underrated adventure game. It's Legend of Zelda, drawn by Disney with blood and guts. Need for Speed, also got it for free. And Resident Evil Code Veronica X, underrated. Good Resident Evil, <laughs> one each here. Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life. Not the best Harvest Moon, but it's the one I had. Panzer Dragoon for the Xbox. And here are my NES games. Chip and Dale. I'll spend more time on these next time. But we're already to 20 minutes. Dragon Warrior. Double Dragon. Excite Bike. Super Mario 3. And on the N64 front, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Super Smash Bros, and Pokemon Stadium. Uh, I'll spend a little bit more time on these next time, and we'll fire them up uh, to see some of them in action, or at least the system configuration. And uh, that's it for now. Hope you liked it.